Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com with another sort of uh, 101 video explaining just some important topic, topics that uh, help you understand the world, economics, and why the world works the way it does. And this today's topic is money, um, a topic that a lot of times people don't find super sexy or they really misunderstand it. So I really wanted to clarify it because it's really important. Now at the end of the day, the reality of the world is scarcity. There just isn't enough resources at the moment to make the things that we currently use at a scale where everyone can use it. There just isn't enough of everything for everyone based on the current demands that people have. Cool. So with that, that's just the reality of the world. So the question becomes sort of how do we get the stuff that we need? So before money existed, you would have to barter for it, which means you would have to obtain goods or provide services and find somebody who wants the exact good or service you have to offer who's willing to pay you the exact type of good or service you need. So what would happen is that you would have, if you were a goat-owning sheep wanter, you would have to find a sheep-owning goat wanter so you can exchange your goat for a sheep. And this is kind of how markets formed in the sense that it was more likely for me to find someone to make that perfect exchange with if everybody kind of showed up at the same place at the same time. So you had these like places where people would go to exchange stuff. And these were called markets. And that's kind of how the whole idea of a market kind of uh, evolved. But what happened is that in these markets, what would eventually happen is that there were certain things that kind of were wanted by enough people or at least known to be something you could trade for to somebody else enough that basically even though it's not the thing that you want you know you can trade it again to somebody else later for whatever you do want and over history sometimes it's been gold sometimes it's been seashells it's been feathers but whatever that thing is that thing that you know that you know what if someone gives this to me now i can use it to get something else later that became known as money now, certain things work better as money than other things. Um, and generally, there's three qualities. Well, there's three things that a money does as far as its functions. And not all money is necessarily satisfy all three functions, but they typically do. Uh, the first function, it's a medium of exchange. So in the case of that bartering system, uh, having that sort of universal good that I know that I can trade uh, facilitated exchange. It made it easier for people to get to buy stuff faster and sell stuff faster, which allows the economy to move faster and do things faster, such as innovate. Um, it is a store of wealth. So if you were a fruit picker and you had to survive just on barter, well, you'd be extra poor because if you can't find someone who, let's say you, you pick bananas, if you can't find someone who wants those bananas before they spoil, the fruits of your labor were gone. But being able to sell the banana for money, you're much more likely to find someone who was willing to buy the banana, and you don't need to find what you need now. You can store the efforts of picking all those bananas by being able to hold on to the money that doesn't spoil. Okay, so I can store my wealth, I can uh, meet, exchange with others, and also becomes a unit of measurement. So we can kind of measure relative wealth, we can measure the amount of resources we're dedicating to a proje project, it becomes a sort of unit by which we can measure economic transactions, economic progress, all sorts of things. So uh, it becomes, a, it just basically takes the direct exchange of goods and services that's actually still happening, but creates a measurable sort of framework on top of it. That's pretty cool. So these three things are very, very useful because it facilitates all the other kind of cool economic stuff that happens, which we'll come back to. So the question is then what generally works as the money? Okay, for something to really be a unit of measurement, it needs to have a generally, you know, predictable supply. So generally you want something that doesn't have a, a, a something that has a very controlled supply. So this is why things like gold worked out really well, because you couldn't just print the gold. And um, you might be able to find some gold in a mine, but it was generally, there was a lot of costs associated with that. So you had to kind of dedicate resources to get resources. Um, so it worked. It was, uh, it didn't spoil. That's another factor of a good money. It's something that just doesn't like suddenly become less over time, like a fruit would. So gold doesn't erode. So that made it, you know, if you had an ounce of gold today, you would have an ounce of gold 10 years from now. So it worked really well as a, as a medium uh, store of value. And then three, 
it has to be easily divisible so you can melt gold and make it into coins so that's why gold once upon a time was sort of ideal money and this is why you know people like cryptocurrencies now again the supply is generally hard-coded into the programming code uh you can easily divide a uh, bitcoin into i think what the eighth decimal and as this price stabilizes over time bitcoin becomes more and more better of a store of value now, of course, money doesn't become money overnight, so it takes time for something to have to build its, its stable value. So that's what money is and what it does. Now to start addressing sort of the criticisms by explaining the benefits of money. Because, because you have money, you can now measure how much wealth you have, which facilitates things like lending. Because now I can better understand how much am I lending to anybody who needs to borrow my capital, what my return is. So basically, if you have an investment and successful, you can actually now measure how successful that investment is. And this allows us to do better economic calculation, meaning to better allocate resources to where they're going to produce the most stuff. So bottom line is that money helps us allocate resources quicker and better so that way we can innovate faster. And that innovation allows us to better deal with scarcity. That innovation, uh, that progress, allows us to provide more for more people. Okay, we take a look at 100 years ago, 200 years ago, the kind of innovations and progress in taking care of things like uh, hunger and whatnot wouldn't have been able to happen if the invention of money didn't help us better allocate resources and make investments in capital. And essentially save lives and allow more lives to be able to exist. But another criticism people have is they'll say money corrupts, that money is a source of corruption, that if we just went back to a moneyless world, that corruption would be gone. But it's not money that corrupts. Money is just basically a way that we are able to facilitate the exchange of goods and services. What corrupts is scarcity and, and, and the, basically the fact that there is scarcity and we need to overcome scarcity that sometimes people will let their desire for the goods and wants that they need allow them to do things that may be unethical and whatnot. But basically, the better we can deal with scarcity through investment and innovation, the sooner we can basically make corruption a thing of the past. As basically, trust me, that things in the past were oftentimes worse. It's just back in the day, you didn't have things like the internet to see the kind of things that people did. But it was much easier to just get away with just, well, killing someone and taking their stuff. Back in, let's say, the medieval ages when technology was a lot worse and, and oversight was a lot worse and the ability to keep an eye on everyone was a lot worse. But as we're able to have those investments turn into th- better and better technology, we're able to keep an eye on e- each other, to prevent each other from doing bad, hold each other accountable. But also scarcity is just less of a problem, that those pressures that cause us to reach into our worst selves are less. And that's in the large part thanks to money. Now, of course, money can be manipulated, uh, whether because money then eventually you know allows us to measure and measuring uh, loans and whatnot oftentimes allows us to measure things in percentage rates and interest rates and all this stuff and distorting all these measuring sticks can distort our coordination and lead to hiccups in that coordination. But the fact that we can coordinate at all is very much the thanks to money and money makes our lives much better and helps us get to a world every day closer to a world that could be absent of scarcity, absent of corruption, and a place where more people can live more richer, free lives. So my name is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com. Have a great day and enjoy.